Hey, what's up stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. So in today's topic, we want to talk about grading. So stream grading. So it can be individual grading, it can be competition grading. However, I think the, the whole idea in today's topic is not really to discuss in depth on individual stream grading. However, I think that the question that was posed to me is that, you know, what are some of the criteria to actually grade your own streams so that, you know, uh, should I count my stream or should I keep them or what, what should I do with my streams, right? So I think that's very important. And before we go directly into the uh, topic today, I actually wanted to give a shout out to those that have uh, given me uh, a lot of encouragement and uh, saying that, you know, Benny, you have given me a lot of information that I have never got it before and I it, it opens up another new perspective in terms of the stream breeding hobby. So thank you for that. And to this topic, let's dive right in and uh, we'll talk about the grading of the streams. Uh, I think the the background information on why this question actually was, was being thrown out is because uh, there has been a lot of uh, discussion around, you know, should I grade, uh, should I count this stream or should I keep this stream for future usage? Uh, and I think most of the replies that was being circulated around is just talking about the color of the stream so for example uh, should i actually count this stream based on color so so i think uh, the the whole idea here is not just about color uh, and i'm going to walk you guys through about uh, on on this topic regarding uh, grading and it, it is actually more than just color in it however i think the more important aspect of the grading chart or the grading methodology is actually to improve your own streams, improve your own self in terms of selective breeding. I think at the end of the day, uh, if you start to you know, track your own streams, you start to breed them and then you start to grade them and give them points and as you slowly move them up, you challenge your own streams, I think that has a long, long way of uh, improvement. In, in other words, not just about improvement on the stream itself, but also your, your keeping methodology, your breeding methodology. And of course, you know, the entire hobby as you, you see uh, all these very nice streams start to unfold in the next generation. I think that spark, that interest or that suspense uh, is, is what kept a lot of uh, stream breeders around the world uh, engaged in, 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 this, uh, in this hobby. So, so, so in other words, uh, I would like to start off with the, the few criteria that, are, that actually you can actually take a look at. Uh, so no, normally what we do is that we will look at color. So color, yes, it is important, but it is not just the only criteria that is being uh, used. Like for example, a PRL or blue boat or a, a boa or black fancy. So color is actually the number one criteria in, in the stream and, and one of the reasons is because we want the entire base, you know, entire base of the stream to be colored. So it, in other words, there shouldn't be any transparency in the in the stream, uh, then it will then qualify in terms of the color. So color can also be broken down into the intensity of the color, the, the variation of the coloration. Like for example, if you see some of this, uh, black streams they are actually not entirely black sometimes you actually see that uh, there's a little bit of this rusty color in it or there is some deep blue in it because in the stream industry in the stream world there is actually no black in, in that sense they are actually very dark blue and uh, they can be actually be seen in stress color uh, so from a color perspective uh, that is number one uh, on, on, on top and then for streams like uh, black fancy tiger, the red fancy tiger, the number two criteria is actually the patterns. So color and then patterns. Uh, and one of the reasons behind why is this being uh, categorized that way or prioritized that way is because color is actually more difficult to create. So the, the uniformity of the color, the base of the color, so that is very difficult to create. So if you get the, the colors right, I think that is the, the notion of why people use color as the first criteria and then they start to count the streams. However, I think we also need to also look at the rest of the streams. If not, you're going to count the entire thing away because at the end of the day, uh, then nothing will work, right? So 
So color is the first one and then the second one would be patterns for those that have patterns. Uh, for example, like black fancy tiger, the patterns on the on the body, is it is it uh, three stripes down or three stripes over or you know there are some of the things like facial patterns like on the boss is the facial blotches big uh, how 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 do I actually uh, look at the patterns are they uniform are they uh, special you know uh, or, or some of these special characteristics on the patterns I think that uh, is also one of the criteria after color so after uh, after patterns there is also size right uh, for some of the streams especially for those that you know you want to send for competition usually size is one of the criteria so, so that is uh, uh, an entire uh, so-called area by itself where it's being it's being judged it's being uh, calculated and it's also being you know uh, identified as one of the criteria and some of the streams as you can realize over the years you know when you start to bridge a lot of streams some of the streams do have do grow into a large size and when you have a large size stream like for example some of them will get to 2.5 cm or even 3 cm that huge size and if they are able to maintain the color and the patterns you know that that stream overall will look very very robust uh, very beautiful uh, and especially if for example the you know one of the another criteria is actually the legs color or the patterns on the legs and if the legs are all full with color with no not much transparency or very little transparency you know that gains a lot of points so size size do matter a lot uh, in, in that sense uh, size do matter a lot but as you can see that some of the streams that you breed over time you know I just I was just looking at some of the PRLs that I have you know uh, depending on the genetics of the lineage you can actually see that the, the streams some of the streams do not grow as big as uh, some of the other ones and, and that is and that is critical and and one of the reasons is because genetic actually builds up the, the size of the stream and where it comes from is is very important so I have seen some uh, Japanese PRL you know they are huge really huge and very nice uh, because their colors and their patterns remain even when they are big so for example if when you go to 2.5 cm some of the prls will start to lose their color uh, some of the so after like for example the females after they get buried they start to lose color after two or three generations or two or three broods of, of streamlets and and this is some of the things that you know uh, is being made up genetically so some of the streams that i've seen you know they, they are big and after many you know clusters of eggs they are still big very white uh, fully colored patterns are nice and that is some of the things that has been uh, so-called uh, good genetics. So other than you know the the the, the colors, the the patterns, the size, you know the legs. You know, what are some of the things that uh, is is also important to the stream? It's also the uh, head to body ratio. I think that is something that is uh, not being discussed uh, widely. Uh, one of the reasons is because because due to a lot of inbreeding, you know. Uh, some of the times when you see the, the stream, the, the head to the body ratio is you know 50-50 which is which doesn't quite make up that you know that look of you know the head is not supposed to be that big so it has to be at least 70-30 uh, in, in that I mean 30-70 in that ratio for head to, to body so when we see the overall figure uh, or overall stream uh, then we will be able to see that okay for example then the stream will start to look uh, we, have, we have good colors, we have good uh, patterns, then our legs are fully colored and then you know of a good size and and then you know the last one is, is actually the entire uh, proportional uh, head to body ratio and of course you know it gives the entire stream a, a very different look and feel and when when a, when a person actually see the stream that person will be, be like oh wow you know it's, it's really amazing and I, and I think and I believe that everybody is able to do that and as long as you are very uh, stringent in your culling and as you get stock streams you purchase them and you start to, to breed them and cull them and, and select them from it and I think I believe that you know a lot of people can actually uh, achieve that that, uh, that quality streams so with that in mind you know uh, this is what I can actually think of offhand is, is those those few parameters or few criteria that they can actually 
uh, grade yourself and then you know as you go along the selective uh, breeding process you can actually uh, start to grade your own streams and then uh, see that okay if I'm going to improve on the next one what should I, what kind of streams should I use to actually uh, breed them and of course you know uh, with, a, with a stable lineage uh, then you can actually uh, be very sure that you know that the, the genetics are actually being is, is there and all you have to do is just to select them uh, every time there's a new 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 clutch or every time there's a new stream uh, new streamless that's being bred out so you can actually take the entire streamless into an, the, the streamlet tank and then from there you can actually start to grid each and every one of them and then uh, see whether do you want to use back some of these um, during the back crossing uh, and for those who are just tuning into this video to learn about uh, grading of streams there's another video that I've, been, uh, that I've made out there uh, that is for the selective breeding process and if you want to use these two methodologies to actually improve your, your streams uh, definitely then you'll be, uh, you, you can go ahead and, and take a look at that video and see how uh, I shared the, the, the breeding methodology that is being widely used in Taiwan. So apart from all these, you know, uh, what are some of the other things that we actually look at in, in terms of, uh, of this criteria? Right. For example, if let's say you are able to actually achieve uh, a few very good, you know, a few very good streams that you want to send for competition, uh, and one of the one of the ideas or one of the recommendation uh, from from those contestants is actually uh, to to have at least four or five of the same uh, four or five of the same uh, size and uniformity, and then you will be able to to get a higher point because to achieve that to achieve that the uh, size is not that simple and to get the uniformity for all of those streams is also not very simple so uh, the, the the challenge there is that because it is not that easy uh, normally what people will do is that you will use the, the larger ones which is the females uh, to send them for competition and, but of course, you know, of all that being said, uh, there are some very nice males that have also very big uh, carapace and they are able to uh, be sent for competition and of course that is also an additional point for that. Uh, so I have not talked about, you know, the shell thickness and of course the, 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 the weightage on, on, on all this. Uh, however, uh, when we talk about colors, uh, you can actually subcategorize them into, you know, uh, you know, is it is it really full, robust, full color, deep color, and all that? And what are some of the points that you want to actually provide your own? So the stricter you are in terms of your grading system, the 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 better you can actually advance in, in there. Uh, and and so there is actually no no one right way of uh, grading your streams. I would say that you know there is a a few sets of criteria, and the the more stringent. Uh, criteria that you actually set for yourself the better it is and that will actually drive your you know your probability of getting nicer and nicer stream over time so there is also another question uh, uh, related to this uh, this topic regarding grading so when for example when you start to grade all your streams and and you have a lot of good, good nice looking streams and there are actually two schools of thoughts you know uh, in terms of that so there are actually quite uh, uh, some school of thoughts in, in, in that sense is because some of the, the breeders do not go for competition. Some of the breeders like to go for competition to, to see where they really are. And I think this is uh, entirely up to, up to individuals. Uh, I just wanted to take a step back and give an, uh, a different perspective on, on this. Like for example, mm, some people like to sign up for uh, like half marathons and marathons you know and then go and run I think that's that's perfectly fine you pay for it you get that that that, that pack and then you, you do that together as a as a group or something right uh, however there's also another school of people that will never ever uh, pay for for a half marathon or a marathon they will just do it themselves so, so I'm I, I belong to that category that I in the past I do it uh, if it's for like for cancer runs and for you know some of the things then I will then gladly pay and, and, and spot you know pay for that run because I want to run for a cost right 
but if you ask me to pay uh pay for something like for example uh, a, a marathon just for maybe a bank sponsor or anything then i would not do it and <clears throat> and one of the things is uh because i find that there isn't really uh oh there's a there's a fly sorry there's actually a fly that you know landed on my glass so to me i i don't i don't find uh find any you know if, if i want to run a half marathon i can just you know uh plan a, ahead and then just you know call a friend or two you know let's let's do the half marathon together uh we don't even need to spend a single cent and and the entire experience it is is really you know the the run right so it's, it's the journey is it's, it's the process it's never the end end game that matters so i think that that this is uh so when we try to re when i want to try to relate this back to the competition is that yes i think it is good if you want to showcase your streams you want to go and join a competition i think that is that's absolutely fine however if you want to keep this as a hobby and you do not want to join for a competition it's, it is also absolutely fine because at the end of the day uh whether your streams are good or not uh, you are the actual actual person that actually sees it the most you have to enjoy the hobby the most and if you join the competition just for the sake of joining the competition and after that you know your your passion for the streams uh do not do not hold any longer or you have an intention to to, to use the competition for something else or for any you know financial benefit and, and all that then then technically uh that's that's a different path that different people take right so from my perspective you know of course you know if uh, let's say if I would like to join a competition, I would want to join uh, an international one. Like if I want to compete, I want to compete with the best. I want to compete with Taiwan. I want to be, uh, I want to learn from them. I want to be, you know, I want to get the tips from them on how to actually advance better. So that is, that is something that I will really uh, look at, you know, uh, in terms of where I want to go in terms of uh, the stream breeding. But if let's say if I do not want to do it, that's also perfectly fine because at the end of the day, like I said, uh, you will be uh, you are the one that actually look at the streams right if you don't like it uh, then then uh, then it's not going to be a very enjoyable hobby for, for you so uh, and and there are a lot of uh, you know people in this stream hobby that do not take this stream hobby just like a stream hobby you know it's more like a social thing right and and I think this this uh, network and this friend thing you know you, you you talk to a friend overseas and you share some of this information with them they they learn something and and you also learn something from them i think at the end of the day you know you make a friend uh it is awesome you know you, you talk about things that you actually like so coming back to, to this topic about grading i just wanted to give a summary of it is that uh if you are going to use all these criteria to actually grade your streams whether do you want to count or not then it's going to be very very time consuming so i think that's that's the one of the reasons why people keep emphasizing on using color as the first card i think that's that's uh, one of the things that you can actually do uh, however if you want to start to categorize your streams like for example if you have a pril tank and you want to really select them out and you can actually use the grading methodology to grade them out meaning taking instead of culling the streams out from the tank you actually take the good streams out into another tank so that way you can actually advance that that good stream tank uh, or good stream uh, into a better level right so for example if you're going to uh, remove some of these good streams from there and you started with uh, maybe 60 points on each of those streams and when the offsprings come out maybe they get 62 65 and then slowly slowly gradually you start to improve them over time and then you get more and more points so so that is that is something that you can actually think about instead of just culling all your streams out you can actually uh, move uh, a good stream forward or you know you instead of using a cow, cow tank uh, and, and removing them you can actually shift the good streams to another tank so i think that's also another methodology you can think about uh, however you know uh, the streamlet tanks is is uh, fairly important because we do not want to disturb the uh, breeding colony and uh, or any chance to actually have a snicker male that uh, come out to a female and then you know when they, they start to breed uh, you get uh, unplanned 
you know, unplanned crosses that you do not really want. So at the end of the day, I think uh, there are many ways to actually reach the room. So you can actually uh, choose the method that actually works well with you. But just note that, you know, as long as there is a sneaker male that goes up to the female and start to breed, the, it, it is really a waste, right? Because uh, you have been going on with such a good process and then, you know, because just because of uh, you do not remove up some of the, the, the streamlets, then it becomes, uh, you know, the, that current clutch will not be able to use. However, there is uh, a way to actually uh, resolve that. One of them is that first you remove the snicker meal from the tank. Then after that, if let's say you know which female is being bred, you can take the female out and actually put it in a breeding, breeding box. So you actually isolate that female from the rest of the, from the tank and then you can actually see uh, if it does get buried. So if it does get buried, then uh, keep that, hit the stream there. Uh, let that uh, stream hatch, I mean the, the eggs hatch and then you can actually reintroduce it back to the tank and then the streamlets you can actually put it in, in, in another tank so there are ways to actually uh, mitigate some of these uh, so-called accidents uh, however, you know, at the, at the onset I think we, what we want to actually emphasize and encourage and recommend is that you remove the streamlets from the, from the breeding tank that will actually help you in terms of the selection process when you want to do the selection from the streamlets to the adults. So that's all for uh, this uh, talk. Uh, I mean this this video. And if you like my uh, this video, please remember to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Peace out.